What's the most horrible thing you've done? This is not the worst thing I have done. But up to this day I remember about it and feel bad. When I was in my early teens. My mom and I never got along. We constantly fought and I was always grounded. So. Once she grounded me and I waited until she left the house and snuck into her room. I grabbed her favorite music CD, it was her only CD, and I scratched it all over with my nails and some keys. Then I left it back in its place and retreated like a ninja. Months later. On a road trip. We were playing some music on the car and my mom put the CD and it sounded like shit. Not even 10 seconds of normal music. She then said oh. Looks like my CD isn't working anymore. I really liked it. I felt so bad that day. When I was younger my friend and I were at the park and we were bored. In the meantime we had found a worn out teddy bear. We thought about it and decided to set it on fire. After the teddy bear caught on fire the fire got uncontrollable. Being young and naive we didn't know what to do so we ran. When I got home my parents talked to me about there being a fire at the park. No one knew about it except me and my friend. Scary day. I don't know if it was the worst. But it is up there. When I was in high school. I put a firecracker in a friend's toilet. I don't know why. I thought it would be funny. When it went off. It cracked the toilet in a few places and it started to leak a little. My friend, who was a bigger guy, came to see what the noise was and I explained to him that it was the toilet seat dropping. He told me to get the hell out because he needed to use the bathroom and I figured it was a great chance to have a great prank play out and to get out of trouble. After about 10 seconds. I heard a noise from the bathroom, like plates hitting a floor but not breaking, and then an agonizing howl. The scream scared the sheet out of me and after a few minutes he came out of the bathroom in his boxes with blood all over the place. Turns out that he sat on the toilet and it broke. Slicing him up pretty good. I never told him what happened and he blamed his weight for it. Gave him a complex for the rest of school. I still feel bad about it. My parents divorced when I was young. My dad remarried and he and my stepmom had two daughters. I visited them during the summer. One of our many activities was playing outside with water guns. Since they lived there and were more permanent. One year they got super suckers. They were expensive at the time for water guns, and consequently. I didn't get one since I wasn't living there and, my, mom would need to get one for me. I had some little dinky water gun compared to them, it was grossly unfair. I am a few years older than my oldest sister, and she is 3 years older than the next. I was faster. A little more cunning. And a lot more boy. One advantage I had over them was that I have a penis, and it is directable and able to focus urine. I had enough of the uneven sides with the water guns and I was able to run and hide from them long enough to use this ability to my advantage and piss into my water gun. I filled the rest of it with water and proceeded to play with my new ammo, Naya. It was much more enjoyable from that point on. They were pretty vocal about how they were winning. But I'm pretty sure they were wrong. I don't know how old I was. But I was old enough to know better. I was having some kind of fight with my mom. She sent me to bed early and I went in the bathroom, because I always took a shower before bed, and locked the door. I then proceeded to pretend to fall in the shower and scream in pain. Expecting her to panic or cry or something, god I hate myself right now. She broke down the door and part of the wall to get to me. So I pretended to have slipped and fallen and forgotten that I locked the door in order to get out of more trouble. A few years later I actually did fall in the shower. I just blacked out and woke up a while later with her carrying me to the hospital. I guess I was bleeding a lot. Karma. One time. After another fight with my mom about homework. I drew a picture of her with a smoking gun in her hand while I was bleeding to death from a gunshot to the head. She had a speech bubble that said I don't care if you're dying. Do your homework she kept it and showed it to me a few years back and we laughed. I love you mom. I was a piece of sheet as a kid. I was about to leave for military basic training. I was scared and trying to have sex with as many women as possible because I guess I didn't think I would ever come back. 
any I started flirting with this one girl who had previously been just a friend of mine. She had a boyfriend but it didn't matter to me because I didn't know him. After a few weeks of intensely flirting with her she broke up with her boyfriend. It was the night before I left and I was saying goodbye to all my friends. I said goodbye to her and she went in for a kiss and I turned away saying I didn't want to start anything if I was going to be leaving the next day. Anyway the worst part about this is apparently the other guy didn't take the breakup too well. His life sort of turned into a downward spiral. I found out that about a year later this guy killed himself. He put on a nice suit. Walked out to the middle of an orchard. Overdosed and wrote a suicide note. I'll never know for sure if I had acted differently if this guy would have still killed himself. Or if his psychological problems ran deeper than just having a girlfriend and he would killed himself anyway. To this day I still feel that I killed this man. 1. One night I was out drinking with some mates when we stumbled into a dark alleyway. I thought it would be a good time to let some fluids out so we all peed in each corner. I started peeing at what I thought to be trash bags when I heard a cry. At the time I thought my mate was making sexual moaning sounds to be funny. Out of nowhere my mate grabbed me and pulled me out of the alley. I didn't finish. Apparently I was pissing on some young homeless woman. I felt so bad I went back with some food to apologize. She left. Dot. I'm still going to hell. I used to work at a Sonic drive-in in Nashville when I was in college. I was one of those girls on roller skates that brought out people's food. So one night I was working and I was bringing out some food to this one car. I went to the driver's side and didn't see anyone there so I went over to the passenger side where there was this white woman. Then as I was about to start handing the food to them I noticed the car was full and had two black women in the back seat and black man in the front seat. I was just like sorry. I didn't see you and really I didn't see anyone. Oops. When I was about 8 years old I was a church going cub scout. There was this little shithead at church who felt like he could do anything because my big brother can beat you up. Double quote. I finally got sick of it and told him I'd kick his ass and his brother's ass too. The little BTCH set it all up. At church. In this kind of atrium area. He leads his big brother in who is probably a good 2 or 3 years older and probably a head taller than me. I laid into him with a heavy punch and almost broke his nose. There was blood everywhere. Turns out the little BTCH didn't tell his brother what was going on and he had no idea what was going to go down. Little BTCH ran off to mommy and daddy and when I explained what had happened he got it worse than anyone. When in college. Got a summer internship at a local non-profit. Good gig. Boss was a super cool hippie dude who lived way out of town on a large farm. Being a farmer he had tolerance for the need for guns in a farm setting, yes. In some instances you actually do need a gun on a farm I. E. Killing predator wolves to save cows or chickens etc. We had a company 4th of July party and everyone was shit faced. Starting with the boss. The boss decides to get out some machine guns out and let people shoot his pond. No harm no foul. Other than totally shit faced and trained people wielding machine guns. Being a redneck by ethnicity and culture myself he gave zero fucks to me playing with his machine gun. I decided to get more shit faced and go Tony Montana on his pond. Woke up in the morning to realize I gunned down a small family of beavers. Which he had hand raised and released back into the wild. TL. DR. Got shit faced at my environmentalist boss's party and gunned down beavers in his farm pond with a machine gun. I once convinced an old lonely guy that I was a teen girl interested in learning from older men. I flirted with him for like 6 months and he bought a plane ticket to New York. Where I said I would meet up with him. I texted him that I had been playing him and apologized. He replied with oh. I should have known no one would ever want me. Edit. I should have been more clear. When it started I told him I was a 17 year old girl. By the time he bought the plane ticket I was an 18 year old girl. He was creepy but not a pedophile. In reality I was a 20 year old male who liked fucking with people in iChat back when that was a thing. I've been told I have sociopathic tendencies by therapists before. Worry late to the party but this always makes me feel sad. 
When I was probably 7-9. My brother 5-7. My mom would buy us the kids cuisine sometimes for dinner. We always got super excited and thought it to be a special occasion. Well. One evening for whatever reason the specific pasta du jour wasn't up to my standards. I made a big fucking deal about this and wouldn't eat it and kept bitching about how poor of a choice this particular meal was. My mom started sobbing and had to leave the table. My dad just looked at me like he was thinking what kind of brat have I spawned? Dot. The twist. My mom has multiple sclerosis, MS, and probably served us those dinners because she didn't have enough energy to cook dinner that night. I still feel like a sheet stain every time I reflect on that. I was a counselor at a sleepaway camp and I put on this full body green spandex suit so I could run around and maybe make some of the kids laugh. I went to a hockey game that some of my campers were playing in. And while I was there. Somehow. This sweet little kid found out that it was me in the green man suit. He tried to pull my shorts off, those things are tightened to revealing believe me, and I played back with him and somehow accidentally punched him in the stomach really hard. He was bawling really loudly in front of everybody. They even stopped the game to see what was going on. I picked him up and carried him back to the bunk. All while in the green man suit. I paid him $30 to not tell anybody about it because I was so afraid of getting fired. Good thing I was covered head to toe or people would have realized that it was me and I might have been. TLDR. Punched a kid by accident while in a green man suit. Paid him off to keep his mouth shut. As kids. My sisters would always make fun of my brother who was a wee bit fat as a child. He always turned to me for encouragement as I never picked on him. One day when I was visiting them. My sisters said something so impulsively funny. That I just laughed without thinking. My little brother was standing in the doorway to go outside and heard the comment about him. And saw me laughing at it. I will never forgive myself for it. The other is when I shrugged off my grandmother's present which was a collector's doll when I was 11 or so. I learned years later that she had saved for months for that doll. As she was quite poor. She died later that year. Alone. When my family was on vacation. It took two weeks for people to find her body. I will also never forgive myself for not showing my love for her. When I was a kid. I wrote in my journal an entry called Reasons I Hate My Mom. The reasons were incredibly petty. My mom found it and I walked in the room and saw her put it down. As I grew older. I realized my mom was suffering from extreme depression and would often literally curl up into a ball declaring she was the worst mother open. That probably didn't help. Hell. It probably started it all. I'll never forget the look on her face when she put down the diary. During a game of minnows and whales at a public pool I faked drowning. I was being brought to the surface which is part of the game and decided to let my body go limp. I lay face down for a few seconds on the surface before someone dragged me out. They laid me beside the pool and began panicking. I just laid there with my eyes closed and breathing as slow and deep as I possibly could. Everyone around me was convinced I had stopped breathing. An ambulance was called to the scene and arrived with siren blaring and lights flashing. The paramedics did not know what to make of it as I began sporadically panting and then holding my breath again. They decided to rush me to the hospital. It took the doctor about 30 seconds to realize I was faking it. I heard my mom arrive and heard the doctor say to her he is just laying there with his eyes closed. Take him home. She came and got me and we went home. I then proceeded to bury that memory as deep as I could. Sorry world. One time when I was a kid. Me and my friend were on Yahoo. Chat. Like way back in 1999-ish when that sheet was new. We were talking to random people in the rooms when we started chatting with a girl who was 16 according to her profile. Also in her profile. It explained that she was getting over her sister's death. I have a dark sense of humor so I typed in I killed your sister. I did not intend for this message to be sent. I just wanted my friend to laugh before I deleted it. That motherfucker hit enter as fast as he could. I've never felt so bad about something I've said in my life. Especially to a complete stranger. The worst thing I've ever done was tell my mom I never loved her. 
I did still do love her but she said something extremely hurtful to me and that was the most hurtful thing I could think to say back to her at that point. It worked. She burst into tears and ran out of the room. And then I ran out of my house and went to a friend's house for two days without telling anyone where I was. I just didn't want to talk to her. I talked to my dad but my mom and I didn't say a word to each other for a couple days even after I came home. Every time I think about it I realize I should have just said how I felt about what she said and not that. I can't get the look of her face scrunching up and the tears forming out of my head. It hurts to think about. A few years ago. Shortly after I graduated university. I faked my own death. Facebook just started being popular. And I was annoyed that people from high school wanted to friend me. As in. People that never bothered to talk to me during high school. So I got a few of my really close friends and asked them to have RIP Ming Why as their I'm names and Facebook status. The first week went as planned. Then I discovered someone burst into tears upon hearing my death. I felt bad. But figured it was going as planned. Someone ended up ratting me out. And now a large group of high school people were furious at me and decided never to speak to me again. So. I kinda guess everything worked out at the end. TLDR I faked my own death. When I was about 16 my friends and I were out getting high and decided that it would be a great idea to put a can of sardines in someone's car. They would hop in their car and the smell would hit them. Hilarious. So we drove around a while until we found this car parked in a little block of offices. I got out and checked the door and it was unlocked. So. I opened the can of sardines and sent oily fish and tomato sauce all over the back seat of the car. As I'm running back to my friend's car I'll look up into the office that still has its lights on. Inside is a woman in her mid 30s early 40s vacuuming this law office at 1. 30 in the morning. This poor woman is a night cleaner. Just toiling away. And now has to deal with what I just did. I still feel terrible to this day and can't believe I could have done that to someone. Had the shits really bad once and I ran to a public bathroom at a grocery store and as I was squatting down with my pants down to my ankles I let loose all over the toilet. The wall. The floor. Everything. Frankly I was shocked I didn't get sheet on my clothes but I didn't get a single fleck on them. I wiped as best as I could in the next stall. Yes I duck walked to another stall and snuck out. I don't think I ever went back there either. I like to think someone quit over that. I had a mean BTCH of a teacher in first grade. Once I had to go pee real bad and raised my hand and asked her. She gave me an annoyed look and told me I can't go and that I had to hold it till recess. I needed to go real bad but as a kid I was very obedient so I forced myself to hold it. Unfortunately. My small bladder couldn't hold on and I peed in my pants at my desk. My teacher must have saw my wet trousers. But ignored me and didn't say anything. After recess I went into class early and saw that she left her cup of coffee on her desk. I didn't see anyone around so I stuck my index finger into my wet trousers got it well coated with my urine and stirred her coffee with my finger. When class resumed I would smile devilishly at my teacher every time she sipped her coffee. She didn't come to school for a whole week and we had a substitute. I now figure I might have had something to do with it. This is a disposable account. There was this guy named Gabe who went to a local high school in my area. He was sort of notorious because he did tons of drugs and fucked tons of girls. So one day I thought it would be a good idea to break into his email and Facebook because there would probably be tons of juicy sheet and ah. His email account had several. I mean tons. Of pictures of naked girls who we all went to school with. It was unreal. He somehow had gotten all these girls to take nudes and send them to him. After promptly saving all of those. I took over his Facebook account and started talking to people. One thing led to another and I ended up posting a few pictures of Gabe getting his CCK sucked by this one girl. Sheet storm ensued. Both him and the girls had the rest of high school ruined for them. Death threats were going around to people Gabe suspected had done it. As well as the girl's brothers. Never got caught. Live through high school. The kicker is that I do it again. I was being bullied for the first two years when I started elementary school. 
Luckily though my best friend was sort of popular and through him I met some other cool guys and started to bully others. It got so bad in the end that one kid we had bullied at the time ended up killing himself. The worst part was when her little sister was shouting at me that you killed my brother. I didn't feel bad about it at the time because I thought killing yourself was weak. Cowardly and pathetic thing to do. But to be honest that makes me feel even worse now. When I was 21. I was living with two female friends and their mother. The guy their mother was dating. Let's call him Kronk. That's what we called him. Stupid ape. Would love to get plastered and beat up on my friend's mother when we weren't around. He also loved to drink my beer in the fridge. I went out and bought a case of Yungling one night and instructed my friends to piss in the empty bottles up to the neck label and give them to me after they were done so I could twist the caps back on. We'd put a little tear in the label to know which ones were piss and which were beer. Needless to say. Kronk and one of his scumbag buddies came in a few hours later drunk while we were in the bedroom playing Perfect Dark on N64. I hear the fridge open and Kronk say want a beer. They're free. We all waited and listened to Kronk and his buddy drink half a case of our piss. Do I feel bad? Not one bit. During my freshman year of school I ran from the police when I was drunk trying to avoid a misdemeanor drinking ticket. I was with friends and two individuals who I didn't know. The cops promised to drop charges for anyone who would rat me out. My friends. Being loyal. Did not. However. The two unknown folks tried to. They recognized me but only knew the name of my friend. We'll call him Jeremy. The cops arrived at Jeremy's dorm room. Accusing him of fleeing arrest. Inside his room they found a large quantity of marijuana. A scale. Baggies and a menagerie of other controlled substances. He got 9 months in federal prison. I got exercise. I feel horrible to this day. Okay. In primary school, I was about 7 or 8, we had a new girl in our class. On her first day she sat directly behind me and my friend. So about about halfway through our lesson I did a silent, but stinky, fart. The class started to go mental and so I blamed the new girl behind me. She got really embarrassed and after lunch she didn't return to class. I didn't think anything of it. So the next day the principal comes into our classroom to talk to the class. The new girl steps outside. He goes on to explain that the new girl has a bladder colon. Problem and wears a special kind of nappy. I try and make myself as small as possible and feel really really bad. The girl remained the rest of the day at school but never came back again. I have never told anyone this not even my fiance. Waited for her to shower before posting. The guilt still gets to me. I wonder where she is now. In kindergarten I got mad at a girl that was on the swing for some reason. I had a AA battery in my pocket and threw it at her. Apparently it was hard enough throw because it hit her on the right upper lip and actually ripped a gash almost to her eye. It was gnarly enough that you could peel the two sides apart and see her teeth. Needless to say I panicked. Threw the battery over the wall when everyone was around her and said it must have been a rock in some sand I was throwing. The monitor's parents had to take her to the ER to get stitches. Never felt so bad about anything. Especially since I lied about it then. When I was 7 or 8 my best friend's mom got a new car. I convinced my friend that we should get in it and pretend we were driving. She didn't want to get in trouble. But eventually I won out and we both got in the car. I accidentally put it into neutral and it started moving backwards. My friend and I jumped out and then watched in horror as the car slid down the steep driveway. Across the street. Through her neighbor's porch. And into their living room. We snuck back into the house through her bedroom window and pretended we were playing with Barbies the whole time. They never found out it was us. We are still best friends and we have literally never spoken of this since. <laughs>